C.A. Priest is a writer and artist who, inspired by Antoine de saint Expurie's timeless classic, The Little Prince, has created The Lost Pilot, a vividly illustrated children's chapter book commemorating the 80th anniversary of this beloved tale. And C.A. Priest is on the line with us here. How are you today? I'm excellent. Thank you for having me. So, first of all, can you share with us the personal connection that you have with The Little Prince and how it inspired you to write The Lost Pilot? Yeah, of course. Um, When I was like five or six, a very, very good friend gave me a copy of The Little Prince and it... um, he signed it and everything like that. I still own it to this day. Um, And it it became that book that I always brought to my mom and asked her to read to me. I became really obsessed with it and just loved it. Um, We went to the library a lot and the librarian there knew a lot about Antoine de Saint-Exupéry and stuff in The Little Prince. So she gave me like recommendations and I just kept reading it over the years. And it's one of those books that when you're a kid, it's this like fairy tale and it's fantastical. And as you become older, it becomes more like a fable with moral lessons and interesting philosophical questions and things like that. So I just really, really um, enjoyed it. And then I, as I got older, I started reading more and more of Antoine de Saint Exupéry's books, like mm-hmm. um, Wind, Fan, and Stars, and Night Flight, and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I, he really inspired me to become a, like a travel writer and go to travel the world and see it and stuff like that. And so I wrote a bunch of articles about him as well. Because it's part homage and part biography, isn't it? Really. So how did you approach blending these elements in your book to pay tribute to Antoine de Saint Exupéry? <laughs> I've read more. Bi- biographies about him and features about him than I can I, I can remember and um, I kind of I went on a little bit of a literary pilgrimage where I went to like the place where he wrote it in New York City or most of the uh, Little Prince in New York City I then to a bunch of his places homes in France and the cafes and stuff like that so I knew the biography about him and I knew that was a really important part of telling his story the Little Prince um, you know has a lot of biographical and interesting kind of autobiographical parts for him and so it was I wanted to do something that paid homage to him and his book, but also like told his story because he is such a fascinating person. So uh, the lost pilot tells a similar story, but it's the lost pilot rather than the little prince. And the lost pilot is, you know, supposed to obviously be Antoine de Saint-Exupéry who disappeared in 1944. And for until the aughts, we didn't know what had happened to him. And so I had this sort of idea of like, what if he just flew off into space to go find the little prince? And that's what kind of started the, my idea for the lost pilot and what was it that inspired that title because it's the same initials as the little prince was that deliberate yeah i was actually i was on a sand dune in the sahara desert actually not far from where he crash landed and first got again i was a bit of a a, a, a haunting him chasing him around the the world or whatever um and i was standing sitting on the sand dune it was middle of the night i was the only one around for miles and miles and miles and the stars were just beautiful i saw these um, um, and there were some shooting stars and it just popped into my head. Like what if he had just flown off and done. And so for me, it was like the lost pilot because we didn't really know what had happened into, to him until they discovered his plane in the Mediterranean sea. So um, he was like lost for, for uh, several decades. No one knew what had happened to him. That's quite a story there. What was it that made you want to explore the author's story? Cause maybe a lot of people would just want to focus on the original book itself. Yeah. I think he was such a fascinating person person. I mean, when you read about him, the reason why he crashed in the desert with another gentleman, and um, that's where he kind of thought up, or, or says he thought up the little prince, because he was there for seven days, was that um, he was trying to beat an, an a land speed record or an airspeed record from mm. like leave Ho Chi Minh City to Paris, you know, it's Saigon at that time. And so he was this adventurous person. He, he was one of the first people to deliver uh, mail all over the world. He discovered air routes and things. And then he was shot down during World War II um, just uh, outside of Marseille, France. Um, so he's just a very fascinating human being. And you mentioned that you stalked him around the world and you have a background as a travel writer. So did your experiences as a travel writer maybe influence you because you're going to all these different places? Well, I had actually pitched the magazine I was working on a um, like an article about like searching for Saint, um, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry because 
we had just, I think they had just the year before discovered that his, the plane and that kind of stuff. And so I actually chartered, well, I, I didn't do it. Somebody at the office chartered me a boat and we took off out into the Mediterranean Sea. And I had the coordinates from an article that I'd read and we floated above it. And then the, the gentleman that owned the boat was French and he didn't speak a lot of English, but he kind of figured out over time that that's what I wanted to do out there. And he actually took people scuba diving. And I'd never been scuba diving, but he fortunately had, I don't know, wetsuits, dry suits. And so he let me jump in the water in one. And so I flew, kind of floated over where he crash landed. And, you know, it was just kind of a, a moment for me or whatever. And that was where the beginning of the lost pilot occurred to me. And, and I started using it and that kind of stuff. So um, definitely he was a big inspiration to become a travel writer. And then a lot of my travel writing was, in uh, you know, influenced or inspired too. So, And as well as being a travel writer, you're also a writer generally and an artist, especially with the artist in mind. How did that influence the visual elements in The Lost Pilot? And how did you balance the written narrative with the illustrations? Because it is quite vividly illustrated, isn't it? Yeah, the the, the aesthetic or whatever you want to call it, um, the, the, the um, tableau of the book is inspired by the night that I was on the sand dune. The stars were so big and so bright and vivid and the shooting stars going by, it was like a screen going across the sky. It was like you could, it almost felt like you just reach up and touch the stars. And so that's kind of the look. And then Antoine de Saint-Exupéry illustrated the little prince. And he was, when you read about him, he was very self-conscious about his illustrations. And I, when I was a kid, I was an extremely good artist, just like it says in the book. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, I stopped painting over or being an artist for a long, long time. And when I was inspired to do this and I read more about him and how he had illustrated himself, I decided I wanted to illustrate it myself. So I had to reteach myself how to paint, wow. uh, especially in watercolors, which is a, you know, a difficult thing to do, but I, I wanted to make sure I was successful at it. And so he again inspired me to try to be an artist again. So that was, you know, one of the themes of the Lost Pilot as well. Was it quite difficult to do justice to the original book when you're doing illustrations? Because the illustrations have to pop out and they have to have a reason to be there. Yeah, and his his illustrations are so iconic now, like the cover with the um, little boy on the asteroid, you know, and all the, and the, you know, being flown away by balloons and that kind of stuff. So I definitely wanted to make sure that I could, you know, uh, reflect that, but I wanted to go a different route and make them more colorful and more interesting. Um, you know, again, that was over 80 years ago when he painted those, but, um, it was in very intimidating and, and same with writing the book because you're trying to write a homage to one of the most popular books of all time and one that's uh, reached a lot of people. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure that I was including him yeah. throughout the book, because I wanted to make sure it was more of a respectful telling than like just a, a rip off sequel or something like that. <laughs> yeah. And it's, of course, the 80th anniversary of The Little Prince. Did you write the book with it in mind for it to coincide with the anniversary, or is that just a happy coincidence? Well, no, it was It was really funny. When the 75th anniversary happened, I was actually in talks with some publishers to, to, to do the book, um, but I couldn't really pull it together in time. And then I think it was like last year I was traveling and somebody, rem I was in New York City and I went to the Morgan Library and I realized that it was going to be the 80th anniversary coming up the, in a year, a year and a half. And so then I like reapplied myself. And it was, you know, when you're doing illustrations and it's taking hours and hours, but you have no sort of contract or anything, you know, in mind or whatever, uh, it's just kind of your own motivation and stuff. So then I, you know, I, I read a bunch more about Antoine de Saint Exupery and of course had the copy of The Little Prince beside me and, and that kind of stuff at the same time. Um, but it, the anniversary, I think, helps because it brings people attention attention to his work again and that's really what the point of writing this book was is like i want people to be inspired by it the way that i was inspired by the little prince do you hope that people that have read the little prince will maybe get the same thing that you got out of it and then get that same thing again when they read the lost pilot yeah i mean i i hope that it goes both ways right i hope yeah. that like people will want to read The Little Prince because they read The Lost Pilot and then, you know, The Lost Pilot will inspire them to use their imagination and stuff because that's one of the cool things about The Little Prince is I feel like after you've read it, you're inspired to do other stuff. Yeah. And, and whatever it is, whatever creative outlet you have. 
and hopefully when people read it they'll be as excited as your dog yes sorry about that (laughs) What do you hope readers of all ages will find the most compelling or memorable about The Lost Pilot? I think the main thing is that um, as you get older, you lose your inspiration for things in life um, and you stop using your imagination. And it's so important to continue to use your imagination. But you really need to be inspired by things in order to use your imagination. So those two things kind of work hand in hand and uh, feed into each other. And so for me, you know, I still get inspired when I look at The Little Prince and when I read the book, um, when I uh, think about the things that he was able to accomplish in his life. Yeah. And so I, that's really what I hope is like people come away from it and go like, I should do something. I should be inspired and I should use my imagination to cre- create something creative for myself. Yeah. And in The Lost Pilot, there is a strong emphasis on the friendship between the traveller and the pilot. So how do their interactions serve to convey the broader messages of the book? Well, I think the the main thing about is, as the um, traveller is learning from the lost pilot what happened to him, he's kind of figuring out that he can't be... Uh, objective about it. He can't be pragmatic about it. He kind of, if he really wants to understand who this person is and the journey that they've been on, he's going to have to use his imagination and go along with the idea that this person was flying around in space, searching for this asteroid and then meeting all these other people on these different planets. And there's um, sort of a duality to it. That's where it's the biography versus the fantastical. And so, you know, the key to the friendship there is that like you learn to respect and understand somebody's perspective and learn from them that, you know, you're going to need to use your imagination and be inspired in order to, like, really connect with them. Because imagination, as well, is quite an important theme in the book. So how do you believe imagination can impact the people that read it, especially in today's fast-paced, technology-driven society? Well, I mean, that's the lovely thing about books, is, you know, when you... There is a, like invention that you have to do i mean you read a book and you can picture the character you can hear what they sound like you can imagine what it's like to be where they're standing and things like that so automatically the books build in this imagination factory for you yeah um then the key to that is like converting using your imagination to being inspired and being able to go out and like do something else and it doesn't have to be write another book or paint another picture it could be any type of creative energy um i i i I think one of the main things of that is that it's so important to maintain that throughout your life just so that you can have a content, contented, fulfilled life. Yeah, definitely. Now, this book, The Lost Pilot, is out now, but are you either working on or considering working on any other books? Yeah, during the pandemic, um, you know, I used to visit my sister outside a lot, and she has a little daughter um, who's my niece, and, she, you know, we were out playing, and they like to, you know, be superheroes or you know she was really young at the time and so I asked her like what do you want to play and she was in kind of a mood and she was upset she's and she was like there's not any girl superheroes there's not any girl protagonists like when I go to the library I can't find a book about a girl hero or whatever and so and I said well what about Hermione Granger and she said well that's those are Harry Potter books and then she's, you know, I brought up Captain Marvel and she had an answer for that, that it used to be a, a guy and that boys on at school don't even like the Brie Larson version, which is just absurd. And, you know, I, we just kept going. And so her and I started talking about a girl character that we could create who would be where she could see herself in and she would go on these adventures and that kind of stuff. So I, I've started drafting that up too. So Sounds exciting. And in the meantime, this book is The Lost Pilot. Where are all the places that were able to find that? You know, a lot of people are on Amazon and stuff, but you can buy it anywhere. Thrift Books, it's on Goodreads, of course. Um, you can go to the library and order it. You can go to any bookstore and order it. Um, it's available just about anywhere that books are sold, So, which is really nice. Smashing. Well, many thanks for talking to us today. It's been great having you here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having me and sorry about my dog. <laughs> yeah, no problem.